My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa! So today I wanted to do a little review of The Obsession by Nora Roberts. So I know that a lot of people maybe have some negative associations with Nora Roberts because honestly she's one of the biggest writers and kind of most visible writers in the romance genre. But I want to try to convince you that if you have some negative preconceptions about her work that maybe it might be worth putting those aside and giving the obsession a try. So first for some context, Nora Roberts has written, and I shit you not, 213 books to date. How? She is pretty much unquestionably one of the dominant voices in romance literature for the last, let's say, 20 years, 25, 30, something like that. And she's also written the very popular In Death series, which is more of kind of like a futuristic mystery series under the pen name J.D. Robb. Some of the trademarks for Nora Roberts are that she was one of the first uh, writers in the romance genre to start to give alternating points of view. So up until her, the majority of um, romance authors only gave you the perspective of the heroine and one of the narrative tension pieces was that you knew what the heroine was thinking but you never quite knew what the hero was thinking. Well Nora Roberts was really the person to popularize also having the perspective of the hero so that is sort of a trademark of her style of writing. She also writes in a very wide variety of uh, subgenres within romance so she's written contemporary romance, paranormal romance which are lovingly referred to as paranoras, she's written romantic suspense, she's written mysteries, I mean she writes a lot of different types of books. But I think her strength is romantic suspense. And there are a lot of kind of classic romantic suspense novels from her. I remember one of the ones that was recommended to me to try from her was Carnal Innocence, which I enjoyed. But I actually think, let's say in the last eight years, her standalone romantic suspenses have just been really enjoyable and really worth your time. That's books like Whiskey Beach, uh, The Search, the Witness, The Collector, The Liar, um, there's been a number of them. But I think the best one that she's written came out last year in 2016 and that is called The Obsession. The reason I think that The Obsession is a great place for people to start with Nora Roberts is that it has a little bit of everything. So the first 20% of the novel focus on uh, a young girl growing up and some major drama in her family and how she reacts to it. And in that respect, it's very much um, reminiscent of a YA novel that has some darker themes. The next, let's say 30% of the novel are very reminiscent of a small town contemporary romance. So what I always like to say for these is, if you like the, st the town of Stars Hollow and Gilmore Girls, you might enjoy small town contemporary romance because they focus on kind of family drama as well as quirky town characters and kind of inner uh, relational dynamics between people in a small community. So that's the next 30% of the book is, is that type of a vibe. And then the last half of the book is when the suspense part of things really kicks into high gear and there is somewhat of a mystery, but I would say it's much more suspense in the sense that you are waiting for the, the bad guy to strike. Um, and you're getting some of his points of view, um, but mostly you're in the point of view of the heroine kind of anticipating his next step. Of course, as in all Nora Roberts books, you do have a really solid uh, romance at the heart of the story between the local mechanic and our heroine, who is a photographer who's just moved to town. But I think that that is kind of the anchoring point, and there's just so many other things going on in the book that I think hold attention. So for instance, the first part of the book, like I said, really does almost read as sort of a coming of age novel or as a young adult mystery. Our heroine, Naomi Bowes, literally the, when we meet her is the night where she follows her father into the woods and, spoilers, but this is on the back of the cover so I don't feel like I'm giving away anything that you wouldn't get from the back of the cover. She follows her father into the woods and discovers that he's been holding young women captive in a creepy old cellar and raping them and killing them. So 
happy 12th birthday. So after she discovers that this is what her dad is up to, and again, we're talking the first like 15 pages of this book, um, she goes into the creepy cellar and frees the girl that he um, has most recently kidnapped and raped. And they walk for miles to the nearest town um, to go to the, the police office. And as the girl is about to leave Naomi, she says, remember for your 12th birthday, you saved a life. And that kind of sets the tone for the rest of the book. I think it's fair to say that the rest of the book is sort of uh, the story of her dealing with that kind of in the short term. So the first 20% is how she makes peace with that um, as, a, as a teenager, her coming of age and um, dealing with the fallout within her family. And then the rest of the book is sort of the long-term version of her dealing with this, really confronting what was the impact of such a terrible, terrible loss of innocence on my part and how do I make sense of the fact that this man was my father and is that kind of darkness in me? So aside from any um, of the romance or mystery or suspense elements that I enjoyed in this story, what I really loved were the family dynamics. I think that Nora Roberts does a really nice job of showing how this um, traumatic, event has impacted Naomi's relationship with her little brother and how they grow up together um, after that point, how that impacts her mother who had no idea that any of this was going on and we kind of come to realize was essentially being mentally or emotionally abused herself. And then also how this impacts the relationship between Naomi and her um, uncle and his husband who sort of take them in. And that is the part that I really just found so lovely and kind of moving was that I think Nora Roberts sets up this relationship between Naomi, her brother, and her two uncles that is just so full of love and affection. And I think it's a real contrast to what we increasingly learn about her father and the way he behaved towards his children. Um, we see that her uncles have just so much compassion for their, their niece and nephew and really become the fathers that these two kids need to become as normal as they are by the time that they're of age. I also think that this is a nice incorporation of diversity in terms of, okay, we have two um, gay characters who are not just window dressing, like they're a very important piece of the story. They have a lovely relationship that we get little insights into. And I just found it really moving because basically part of the dynamic between um, her uncle and her mother, so brother and sister, was that when he first came out, she was very supportive. But then as she kind of came under the influence of Naomi's father, she essentially pushed them away. She pushed her brother and his husband away. I think it's really kind of a lovely story of the amount of compassion that he has for his sister and the situation she found herself in um, and his ability to forgive her and to really step in and take care of her children in a way that she's just not able to. So I just found that to be a really lovely um, way to include diversity in a meaningful way into the story and not just sort of as, oh, there's a couple of gay characters. The other thing I love about Nora Roberts' books is that there tend to be a lot of adorable dogs. So Naomi ends up adopting a stray and his name is Tag and he is amazing and as always, he has an important role to play. Nora Roberts does a really great job. <laughs> I think if you love dogs, she always does a great job of like, making you want to get a dog or get a new dog or hug your dog um, because they always have a lot of personality and um, she finds fun ways to include them into her plots. So all in all, I think that The Obsession is a really solid piece of popular fiction that if you've been maybe a little resistant to trying Nora Roberts or if you kind of have a little bit of a stigma associated with romance genre, I think that this is a really friendly point of entry. For one thing, the cover is not embarrassing. For another thing, it really is a lot about the family relationship and the mystery and not just about the romance that's in the story. There is some sex, but I don't feel like it's super graphic or kind of like 
cringe inducing. Um, it happens and, and it's certainly there, but it's, it's nothing crazy, I don't think. So um, yeah, I think that if you've been maybe looking to try something in the romance genre, this might be a really great way to kind of dip your toes in. And you know, this is, because this is a less embarrassing cover, you could read this on the train and not get the same crazy looks that you would be getting if you read, let's say, Fifty Shades of Grey on the train or whatever this is on the train. Those are some thoughts on The Obsession. If you guys are interested in reading this, let me know below. If you have read it, let me know what your thoughts are. Or if you have any suggestions for books like this, I really enjoyed this book and would love to read. I mean, unfortunately, even though she writes a shit ton of books, she can't write me a new book every month. So if you have books that you think I would like based on this suggestion, let me know in the comments. So yeah. That's another day in my 30 days of content. I'm really, really having a good time with this. So anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.